Welcome back to the MSAG's COVID-19 series. In our previous videos, we've covered a breakdown of the COVID-19 pandemic, how it was handled by the UK government, what they did well, and what they could have done better. In the next few videos, we'll build on knowledge for your interview questions that will ask for your opinion on the pandemic's impact on patients and different patient groups. There are many ways to look at the impact of COVID-19 on patients. We can think of patients with conditions that need frequent care, such as diabetes and some cancers, or patients with conditions that need urgent care, such as heart attacks and strokes. It's also important to think about how the COVID-19 pandemic affects a patient's mental well-being or how it affects a patient's behavior towards healthcare. In this video, we'll focus on an overview of the impact on patients in general, then the impact on patients with chronic diseases. First, let's recap the number of cases and deaths of COVID-19 in the UK up to this point. This graph shows the cumulative number of people testing positive for COVID-19 in the UK from March 2020 to the end of January 2021. As of the 27th of January 2021, over 3.5 million people have tested positive for COVID-19 in the UK. This graph shows the cumulative number of people who have died within 28 days of a positive COVID-19 test. As of the 27th of January 2021, there have been 104,703 deaths reported. Pause the video and think about the impact that COVID-19 has had on patients during the pandemic. Which subgroups of patients may have been particularly hard hit? In what way have they been affected? The COVID-19 pandemic had a huge impact on the core day-to-day -day services offered by the National Health Service. The NHS had to make difficult decisions to ensure that they freed up enough capacity to deal with the new wave of COVID-19 patients that they expected to enter hospitals. In addition to the reduction in services by the NHS, fewer patients were willing to seek care during lockdown for fear of catching COVID-19. An example of this was seen in ophthalmology departments across Wales. Ophthalmology is a branch of medicine and surgery which deals with the diagnosis and treatment of eye disorders. Sally Davis, the head of Optometry Wales, said that people with serious eye conditions are sitting at home, slowly going blind, and that some patients were terrified to leave their house because of COVID-19. The combination of reduced NHS services and patients being scared to seek help has meant that millions of patients missed appointments. This is one hidden impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's look at some statistics on patient care for the period between April and June 2020, as this is when services were first severely disrupted. These figures are estimates from the British Medical Association. There were between 1.32 and 1.5 million fewer elective admissions than would normally be expected for this time period. An elective admission is a planned or non-emergency admission into hospital, such as a planned hip replacement operation or a planned cataract surgery. There were between 2.47 and 2.6 million fewer first outpatient attendances. Outpatient clinics provide preventative, diagnostic, and treatment services within hospitals. This is often where people are first diagnosed and assessed within specialist departments. Have you heard of the term shielding? Patients deemed as clinically extremely vulnerable received a letter asking them to shield. This includes patients with specific cancers, severe respiratory conditions, and other illnesses. More than 2.2 million people were advised by the government to shield during the COVID-19 pandemic meaning they could not leave their homes until the end of May 2020. Arrangements had to be put in place to deliver food and medicines to these patients. A survey by the Office of National Statistics found that 35% of people shielding said that their mental health got worse. 20% of patients who were shielding said they were unable to access certain types of their care, such as tests and scans. 10% of patients who were shielding said they were unable to access any care at all since they began shielding. One group of patients who have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic are patients with chronic conditions, a disease or illness that lasts for more than three months and is long-term. Some of the most impacted chronic conditions during the COVID-19 pandemic are diabetes, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, and high blood pressure, also known as hypertension. Let's look at each of these chronic conditions in more detail. Diabetes. People with diabetes are at an increased risk of serious illness from COVID-19. 
As of 2019, around 3.9 million people in the UK were living with a diagnosis of diabetes. This is around 6% of the total population of the UK. A study from NHS England revealed that one in three people who have died in hospital in England following a diagnosis of COVID-19 also had diabetes. A whole population study published in the Lancet Medical Journal looks at the risks of in-hospital death from COVID-19 in England. This study found that people with either type 1 or type 2 diabetes had a significantly increased risk of dying from COVID-19, more than someone living without the condition. People with diabetes usually have regular checkups to keep them as healthy as possible. These checkups include blood tests, eye tests, feet checks, and blood pressure checks. Diabetes care has changed during the pandemic, with a shift to online appointments where possible. There has also been a push to encourage people with diabetes to closely monitor things like their blood sugar and feet themselves. Some charities, such as Diabetes UK, have been supporting people with diabetes by creating educational resources and videos for patients. Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease COPD describes a group of lung conditions that make it difficult to empty air out of the lungs because the airways have become narrowed. COPD includes emphysema and chronic bronchitis. In the UK, it's estimated that 3 million people have COPD, of whom 2 million are undiagnosed. The usual treatment for COPD involves inhalers and pulmonary rehabilitation. Pulmonary rehabilitation is a specialized program of exercise and physiotherapy to help people manage their condition. In a study published in the Lancet Medical Journal, it was shown that patients with severe COPD had a higher risk of death from COVID-19 than patients without COPD. Another study looked at the impact of COVID-19 on people living with COPD in the UK. The study found that patients with COPD were living with increased levels of anxiety, reductions in their physical activity, and reductions in the number of visitors during periods of lockdown. The study also found that patients with COPD were being treated more often for exacerbations, or a worsening of their condition. The researchers believed that the changes in these patients' daily lives, such as increased anxiety and reduced physical activity, could explain the increased number of COPD exacerbations. High blood pressure, also called hypertension, is when the pressure in your blood vessels is unusually high. High blood pressure is often described as a silent killer because it rarely causes symptoms, but is estimated to be responsible for 75,000 deaths worldwide in 2015. Persistent high blood pressure can increase your risk of many serious and potentially life-threatening health conditions, such as heart attacks, strokes, and vascular dementia. High blood pressure affects more than one in four adults in England, which is around 12.5 million people. Having high blood pressure alone does not place a patient in the shielding category for extremely vulnerable clinical patients. It seems likely that the increased risk of having high blood pressure and COVID-19 is relatively low if your blood pressure is well controlled. The evidence is a bit mixed, but studies show that poor blood pressure control is independently associated with an increased risk of death from COVID-19. This is especially important because of how many people suffer from undiagnosed high blood pressure. It's estimated that in England alone there are more than 5 million people that are undiagnosed. As high blood pressure often comes with no symptoms, it's often only picked up by screening or when patients present to their doctor for something completely unrelated. As less and less people visit their doctor and face-to-face -face consultations are reduced, there is a real risk that more patients will continue living with undiagnosed high blood pressure and the risks associated with it. This wraps up the first video about how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected patients. In our next video, we'll take a look at the impact the pandemic has had on cancer patients, as well as people over 60 years of age. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.